Singaporeans today are eating more than before and more than we need. We're piling on the kilos and paying the price for it. At this rate, 15% of our population will be severely overweight within the next six years. Obese people face serious health risks such as diabetes, heart disease and stroke. I'm Ray, a former PE teacher turned musician. My late grandmother had diabetes. My mother has it. And I don't want to be next in line. So I have an ambitious plan to fight the health crisis. And I'm starting with our kids. Let's go. Let's go. OK, guys, let's go. Exercise for recess. Yeah. Obese children have a 70% chance of persisting as an obese adult. If you don't get to these children early, you will struggle their whole lives. Are you willing to try a whole variety of vegetables? No! Over the next five weeks, I'm on a mission to change the lives of six school children. In half a bottle is five teaspoons of sugar. So in one bottle is? Ten. Oh my goodness! One, two, go! Ita, how many? For 20, uh, with a stomach ache, for eye pain, chest pain and back pain. To transform them from couch potatoes into heroes at the front line of the fight to get fit. That's a great job, guys. You guys led them by example. Come everyone! It's 6.30 a.m. Time to head to school. But Etha has fallen back to sleep on the sofa. Nine-year-old Etha may struggle to stay awake, but he's never too sleepy to eat. I normally eat a lot of junk food at night because, you know, it's my midnight snack. I also eat junk food at recess. You know, the chicken chop, the biscuits, chicken. Uh, that's all junk food. Despite his unhealthy eating habits, Ita still manages to pack it all into a 22 kg frame, well below the average weight for his age group. Ten-year-old Genevieve doesn't have a problem waking up, but her habit of skipping breakfast and eating out after school, mostly hawker food, has caused her to gain weight. My mother and my grandmother keep telling me that I need to eat lesser and eat more healthily. Because um, she thinks that I'm fat. Last week, the kids came face to face with the consequences of an unhealthy lifestyle. This week, the kids are starting their next phase in their fight to be fit. They're taking the fight back to school. My classroom is at level five. I feel angry about that because it's unfair. Why is it unfair? Teachers have to carry small bags, students have to carry big bags, but we have to carry, uh, go up the stairs. The school that uh, let us climb the stairs and don't let us take the lift. I don't know why. It's still a mystery to me. Singapore's children spend a third of their lives in school. It's no wonder that it has a huge impact on what they eat and their level of physical activity. If we didn't have PE four times a week, I would never exercise on my own. If you had to do PE every day, how would you feel about that? I don't want to come to school anymore. If, if I have to do PE every day, I'll feel happy. Ten-year-old Alif and nine-year-old Tuti love food. But when I visited them last week, I discovered they have a family history of diabetes. The overweight siblings have a high risk of similar health problems if they don't turn their lives around. Every day before recess, Alif and his sister Tuti join some 20 other overweight students at the school gym for 10 minutes of exercise. Just walk around. Under the watchful eyes of a tough taskmaster. Oh, hey, 95, he's dropping. Come on, keep it going. See if we can reach 100. Let's go, keep counting. Hi, hello. I'm Ray. Hi, Ray. Uh, I'm who? 
I'm uh, the PE teacher in charge of Active Recess. The Active Recess program is for our severely overweight pupils. Sugar coating shouldn't be the way. You are single out? Yes, you are. But you are not a social outcast. You are here doing more exercise. Yes, you are. But you are doing something for yourself. It's a stark reminder of the time when I was a PE teacher. Schools had trim and fit clubs then, also known as the Tough Club. They were part of a program requiring obese school children to exercise, to get them to lose weight. During active recess, we will do stepping, cycling, jumping, and boxing. It's skipping. Oh yeah, skipping. We will do skipping. <laughs> I feel happy that we got active recess every five minutes before our recess, so maybe I can try to cut down my weight during active recess. The TAF program was launched in 1992, and over the next 12 years from 1993, the proportion of overweight students in Singapore fell from 12 to 10 percent. But TAF clubs were criticised for stigmatising obese children and was replaced in 2007. However, a part of it lingers on in Clementi Primary School. Okay, look at your pulse. Put a hand here so you can see your pulse raising. Good job, keep going, keep going. Let's go, let's go. Look into the mirror, come on. I want you to see somebody that you should be proud of. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Almost there, 100. Yes, yes. <laughs> you want to be healthier, so you've got to work hard. It doesn't mean that you're going to be this, like this forever. I will be here every day with you. I'm going to work out with you. I kind of feel that it's still very similar to the TAF program from some years back in the sense that the kids are still singled out. There's always a stigma associated with that. My enemies, they will like laugh at me. I feel angry. I also feel angry since she's my sister, I have to protect her. What about you, Ali? Mm, I like active recess. I want to cut down my weight so I can be more fit. The question remains, does it encourage the kids to love exercise in the long run? Experts say children embrace physical activity only when they find it fun. By making it fun, they'll believe they want to exercise and get fit, even if they're not overweight. Even sedentary kids with poor eating habits could develop diabetes as an adult. So I think the school should maybe do a program which could include all kids and encourage them to be more active rather than just single out a small group. Being healthy is not all exercise. It's also about what they eat in school or even what they don't eat. Today we're going to look at the food waste that you have after recess. Oh, no. To see what kind of food you guys throw away. Ready? Our schools have a bigger influence on our children's physical activity than many of us realize. Let's go, let's go. Get to work. Here at Clementi Primary, I'm on a mission to get six young kids fitter and healthier. And for the next stage, I'm staking out the school canteen. I saw a lot of them with sugar drinks in their hand. I do wonder how much of these they consume a day and also if they are actually aware of how much sugar goes into each drink. I like to drink sweet drinks. I like it because of the recipe is cow's milk and cocoa. I think it would be difficult for me to stop drinking sweet drinks. Eating sweet or salty foods releases dopamine, a chemical in the brain that makes us happy. This could be why many kids love their sweet drinks. Okay, kids, let's see what you guys like to drink. Ita. Uh, ice lemon tea. Ice lemon tea. Green tea. Green tea. Grape tea. Grape tea. Milo. 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 Do you guys actually know how much added sugar are in your drinks? Grab a teaspoon and then 
I'm going to ask you how many teaspoons of sugar you think are in a particular drink. For this experiment, I'm getting the kids to guess how many teaspoons of sugar goes into their favourite drinks. One teaspoon is about five grams of sugar. OK, let's take a guess. How many teaspoons of sugar are there in one bottle of green tea? I think I know already. 20. 20 teaspoons. Wow. So you guys think 20 and you guys think 4. OK, what, what makes you think 4? I don't think it's that much. OK, looking at the label behind, it says total sugar is... 20 grams. Drum roll. 6 teaspoons of sugar. Okay, next drink. How many teaspoons of sugar are there in one can of an isotonic drink? Last one, this one's on paper. Milo is less than so many, many. Oh, my eyes are blurry. When I put it in to that cup, I was like, what? One teaspoon of sugar is actually quite a lot. How many teaspoons of sugar is that? Five. Five in a can of isotonic drink. Um, one and a half. One and a half teaspoons in one can of isotonic juice. Okay. All right. Please be correct. Please be correct. The label says 17.6 grams. So in one can of isotonic drink is approximately three and a half teaspoons of, of juice. I thought it was supposed to be a sports drink. But wait. It gets worse. Wait till they see how much sugar is added to bottled fruit teas. Can you guess how much sugar there is in this bottle? About seven. <laughs> what, what do you think? I say seven. Seven. Seven in one bottle of passion fruit tea. Okay, let's have a look. Mm, Alyssa. Read it out. Per serving size is 25.7. Okay, which means that in half a bottle is five teaspoons, so in one bottle is. Ten. Oh my goodness. That is a lot. I was shocked, like, wow. Whoever drinks this much is going to have diabetes. When I saw how much sugar was inside my favourite drink, I was shocked in every way. I always drink and drink a lot. I take three servings or two servings or one serving. Maybe I ought to try stop drinking sweet drink. But our bodies require some sugar and sodium to function properly. Eating a balanced meal is the way to go while the government's health promotion board has strict rules on canteen offerings, are our kids actually eating what's on their plate? The garbage bin tells us what they're not eating. OK, guys, gather around. Today, we're going to look at the food waste that you have after recess. Oh, no. see what kind of food you guys throw away. Ready? I saw a big amount of food thrown away. I think if you mix it in a blender, it becomes disgusting juice. Looks ah. like someone's thrown away their fruit. Ah. Like uneaten. Can I have it at least? No. Oh, this guy is disgusting. Yeah. Ew. Ew. When we went through the trash disposal bin, I saw people throw away vegetables, meat, meat, waffle, and rice. That's so wasteful. My friends will throw away some food from the canteen, like vegetables, because they don't really like it, although they still buy it. So even if our kids are served a balanced meal, it's not balanced if they're dumping the good stuff. Are the portions simply bigger than they actually need? Professor Mary Chong is an expert on child nutrition and eating behaviour, and she's going to examine some of the kids' favourite dishes. There is Alif and Tuti's favourite mee soto, Ethan's tom yum instant noodles, and Ita's favourite chicken rice. Okay, everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Mary. Mary is an expert in food and nutrition. Say hello to Mary. Hi, Mary. Hello, nice to meet you. So I know that Ray has bought some of your, of your favourite foods from the canteen over here. Yeah. Okay. Are these similar to what you normally buy? The kids will soon notice that these dishes look rather different. They are the healthier versions of their usual dishes, with fresh yellow noodles and more greens. It's different. There are less condiments. And the noodles are not instant noodles. 
But instant noodles are quite high in, in salt, in salt, right? So it's tasty but not very healthy. Why does a lot of salt means it's not healthy? Okay, so when you take too much salt, too much sodium, you get high blood pressure because your heart is working very hard to pump blood around your, your, your body. People can die of heart attack if they have high blood pressure. My next question to you is, how do you know if the amount of food you have eaten at a meal is enough for you? Um, do you think there's a right portion for children? Yes. Yes. What's the right portion? I think medium should be good enough. There's actually no one size that fits all. Our body is made up of seven. The nutritionist told us, first thing of all is to chew slowly and just make sure that you don't gobble everything up because when you do, uh, your mind wouldn't register that you've actually eaten and then you'll still feel hungry. I think the canteen can add a medium bowl size because their only portions are small and big. And another thing is to stop when you're full. Just because the food is nice doesn't mean that you have to finish everything. It surprised me that it was actually so simple just to stop when you're full because I thought it was way more complicated than that. Do you guys have any ideas on how to improve the canteen? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Okay, so keep your ideas in your head. Armed with their newfound knowledge, our heroes can't wait to take on the canteen coordinator, influence their friends, okay, guys. And change the world. When the auntie loses business or something. My team of young heroes want to get fit. They've identified improvements for the school canteen. More vegetables, less processed foods, and more portion selections. They're meeting canteen coordinator, Alethea Ng, to present their demands. Uh, Alif, maybe you can give us the first suggestion? Mm, maybe have less bottled drinks because most of the time, the drinks that they buy are mostly sugary. I think, yeah. I think their concern actually mainly for bottled drinks is the sugar content. Increase the number of uh, vegetables. Mm. Increase the amount of vegetables. In each dish. Okay, we do have vegetables right now. Not, not all, like, like I want more. Our problem is that uh, many children actually throw away the vegetables. So we're still encouraging everyone to eat vegetables. You can actually request for the aunties to give you extra portion of vegetables. Okay. Is it too difficult to take away the instant noodles? Okay, the instant noodle is a popular dish among the pupils. Am I yeah, right? that's why I'm saying like, if like Sunny is gone and then the what if the auntie loses business or something? Yeah. Correct, you have a good point there. The auntie actually sells a lot of uh, instant noodles every day because you all like like it a lot. I think the better okay. thing is just take out the instant noodle. Yeah, I should ask my right. friends. Then you need to provide alternative for the for those instant noodles lovers as well as oh. for the vendor. I think it all comes down to still. Friends have to know yeah. why instant noodles are not the entirely best choice. So I think if people know that, then maybe the chances that they would switch to another noodle would be, would be higher. And then what the for anyone? I know! <laughs> we can hold a campaign in school. Say no to instant noodles. What a good acting you have. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I think the exchange with the coordinator was good. It was very two-way. The kids gave their suggestions and their ideas, which were very constructive. More and more, I'm starting to believe that it is important to change the mindset of the children and for them to make informed choices. So they need more information. And I think a good way to do that would be to get these fit hero guys, get them to go out and spread the word and spread their knowledge and what they're learning. And that includes an overdue invitation to Active Recess. Okay, kids, let's go get your whole school moving during recess. Yay! <laughs> let's go. Let's go! Okay, guys, let's go exercise for recess. Yeah. Next one, keep going. It's five minutes of exercise before recess. Everyone, regardless of height or weight, 
having fun together. Now that's the kind of active recess I want to see. It's been a great week. My pride of heroes have started their transformation. And just as I hoped, it's spreading to their classmates, their teachers and the rest of the school. But there's one more thing. So I gave the kids a pedometer last week to measure their steps. Um, so far from what I see, the results are quite varied. Some of them have between like 1,000 plus steps to about 20,000 steps. Now experts recommend that kids need about 12,000 steps a day. So I'm going to try to figure out there's a way I can get them to increase the number of steps and keep it consistent as well. To make sports much more fun is by playing it by a game or hearing music. Music. Dancing. I think Zumba is fun because uh, sometimes when I watch on YouTube, I just see like people having fun. If I had to do exercise every day, I would do Zumba only. In the spirit of empowering the kids, I've taken up the suggestion. We're not exactly gifted, but it's a great way to clock steps while having fun. It doesn't end today, though. I have a plan to keep them practicing. All right, so what's going to happen is, since you guys are already learning the dance steps, you are going to be leading the whole school for Zumba. It's been a tough battlefield, and we're sowing the seeds of change. But the going is about to get tougher as our heroes overcome deeply rooted habits that have started at home. Yay, so much pastries! I just want to buy it because I know you've been a good boy. Share this with me, please. It's too big. Mm -hmm.